Hello and welcome to Just One More Watch. If you like watches and you like bargains, you are just like me. I would like it if you would subscribe to the channel by hitting the big button that says subscribe on it. The unofficial channel motto here at Just One More Watch is you don't have to spend a fortune if you don't want to to get a great watch on your wrist. Not sure if it works as a t-shirt though. But no video exemplifies that channel ethos better than this one. I'm gonna show you 10 watches today, maybe a couple of bonuses as well, that you can pick up for less than 60 US dollars that I think are fantastic. Now, I made this video two years ago for less than 50 US dollars. There has been a little bit of price creep since then. I didn't think it was fair labeling it as $50 and then showing you everything at 58, 59 bucks. So under 60 it is. I have, however, since then discovered the pleasures of AliExpress. So there's a few Ali bargains chucked in here today. Now, I'll leave links in the description of the video to all 10 watches in the order that I show them in, either eBay, Amazon, or AliExpress. There's a bit of everything to today, there's a couple of Swiss watches, I've got two 200 meter divers, there's a couple of chronographs, a couple of great casual everyday pieces, there's digital, there's quartz, there's mechanical, there's automatic, there's sapphire crystal, there's acrylic crystal, there's mineral crystal, a bit of everything but not all at the same time. Let's flip the camera and get on with it. Now these are in no particular order and I put my money where my mouth is, I have bought all 10 of these watches. If you're starting a budget collection, I reckon the first two that I show you should be up there at the very top of your list. So I'm gonna start with what I think is a genuine icon of horology and a design classic. It's the Casio DW5600. So I'm not gonna spend forever talking about this or anything else today because I do bang on about the 5600 quite often. It's certainly one of the watches that has crept up in price over the last couple of years because of idiots like me telling you all how good it is. You can still get them for less than $60 though and if you can, I recommend that you do. I call it a classic, I call it an icon. This is the first G-Shock here on the right from 1983. It doesn't look very different to the current model, does it? This is the first of the 5600s from the mid 80s. They just haven't changed this design in 35 years because they haven't had to. It is genuinely pretty close to perfection. About 43 mil in diameter, which sounds a lot, but it's very, very light. Basic module, one alarm, countdown timer, stopwatch, day date complication, and a decent electroluminescent backlight, as you'll see in a second. But that's really all you need. It's tough as nails, this thing, and it also has 200 meters of water resistant. On specs alone, that is just just an outrageous offering for not a lot of money. Obviously it's quartz, it's battery powered, you can take the case back off yourself and pop a new battery in it every couple of years. I've got a seven inch wrist for your reference, it's just about average size I would say. And if you ever get bored of your plain old resin banded G, for another $60 you can pick one of these outrageous full metal kits up from AliExpress. I'll leave a link to that one too. Next up at number two, there are no Seikos on today's list. The price of Seiko 5s has crept right up to $80 minimum, and I just don't think they're worth that money. I'm gonna show you a watch that I think is not only much cheaper, it's also better. It's the Cadison C1032. All right, all right, perhaps not the catchiest name in the world. We're here on AliExpress at the Cadison official store. That's where I got mine from. Less than $55, though you cannot argue with the value. And it's a good looking watch as well. A lot of these Chinese watches tend to be overcooked. This one, I think, is perfect. Great proportions. It's a 40 mil, 20 mil, so 40 mil diameter, 20 mil lug width, all stainless steel construction, sapphire crystal covering the dial. And that, my friends, is a Seiko NH36 hacking and hand winding automatic movement. Two different colorways. You can have this silver with a lovely strong sunburst effect on the dial. Applied indexes, that Roman up there at 12. Dauphine hands, nice frame around the day date complication. Really, my only complaint about this watch is that the bracelet is all high polish finish, so it does tend to scuff and scratch quite easily. A bit of Cape Cod though makes it shiny and new again. The black one is also a bit of a looker, so I ended up buying two of them. I keep the silver one on the bracelet and I wear the black one on a variety of slightly off-colored vintage looking brown straps. I'm wearing it in the intro of today's video on this slightly kind of red toned one with the vintage cross stitching. It's a great daily this one. It's a great Monday to Friday nine to five watch. It's a great value package overall for $55. 
At number three, it's a big brand chronograph that doesn't cost the earth. I bought and reviewed one of these Timex Waterbreeze myself maybe about three weeks ago and I was very impressed. Yeah, so big brand, everybody's heard of Timex. You might have to do a bit of digging for this one though. I found this brown version on eBay for just over $50. They're here and there on eBay and Amazon and various other locations. Might be best though to set an alert on drop.com. They were on drop.com a couple of months ago, a few different colorways for $55. Chances are they'll come round again in a few months time. Again, classic dimensions on this one, it's a 4020. That's gonna suit the vast majority of people people, mineral crystal covering the dial, the whole thing had a real feeling that it had been well thought out. It was legible, it was practical, quartz chronograph movement is going to be reliable as well. My only issue with this one was that date complication rather nailed in there at 4pm. Lovely looking strap though from a tannery in Minnesota USA, definitely the best leather strap that I've encountered on a watch at this price and it had quick release spring bars so if you do have a collection of 20mm straps you can swap it out. Bit of lumen the hands but really this Timex's party piece is that. It's the indiglo function. If you push the crown in the entire dial lights up. Now that is going to suck the juice out of your battery and no mistake. You should expect a battery to last maybe two to three years in some of these quartz watches depending on how often you use the chronograph and depending on how often you use that indiglo feature. Again it's an easy swap though. You can buy batteries for all of these quartz watches that I'm going to show you today on eBay and replace them yourself for a couple of dollars. So big Big brand, clean, easy to read, kind of classic look and watch, should definitely be on your shopping list if you're after a chrono for not a lot of money. At number four, it's the only homage watch on today's list, but I think this one offers fantastic value and it's a great all-rounder. So much so that I've got two of them. It's the L'Oreal Submariner. Look, some people aren't into homage watches, no problem at all. I like them, I've got no issues with them and I think they're great value. So this one, a smidge over 60, 63, 84. I could have cheated and shown you the one in the NATO strap for just under, but I reckon you should buy the bracelet. There's a black, there's a blue, there's a Hulk, there's a Kermit, there's a blue and black, there's a two-tone bezel, there's a PVD for a few more dollars. I reckon go for one of the straight colorways. I've got a green one myself and I've also got a black one and I'll show you both. 200 meters of water resistance, again, Again, a sapphire crystal, there's a bit of loom on the hands, there's a cyclops, over the date complication at the three o'clock, it's a unidirectional rotating dive time bezel, screw down crown, and an automatic movement. Now that is a Seagull ST16. Don't freak out because it's not a Seiko or a Miyota. Seagull know what they're doing. They're the world's third biggest movement manufacturer. They make 300 million movements each year. The one in my green L'Oreal that you can see on screen has been running away like a champ for the last year, coming in at around plus six, plus seven seconds per day. Aluminium bezel insert with no loom pip, limiting its function therefore as a diver, but you're not really gonna rely on this one at 30 meters below sea level, are you? And those mid links of the bracelet are high polished. This is my box fresh black one. I just bought it in for a comparison review. No real weaknesses here. I mean, it's a press class, but I'm not gonna complain too much at the price. It's got a real feeling of solidity about it, this L'Oreal, which is why it's in this list as opposed to the Invicta Pro Divers. Again, the Invicta Pro Divers have gone up and up. You can't really find one of them for $60 these days. Crown unthreads, the movement hacks, it hand winds, crown rethreads, all very, very nicely. A well-made little watch for $60. Or if you prefer your 200 meter dive watches with more original designs and you're okay with quartz, then you just can't go wrong with a Casio Duro. Ah, the Casio MDV-106, aka the Duro. They've just released blue ones and that black and gilt one. How fantastic does that look? Around the same price as the old black model, around 60 US dollars. Again, this one has crept above the 50 and is now pushing towards the 60. It's the same price on eBay, same price on Amazon. I'll leave links for both in the description of the video. And once again, here is a box fresh Duro for your entertainment today. There's only a couple of real negs with the Duro. Uh, the main one is it's a 44 mil diameter so guys with average wrists or smaller than average wrists might not take too well to it and if you don't like quartz well I refer you to the L'Oreal previously but it is such a clean such a handsome looking watch 
Applied indexes here, it's all black and white apart from that little red tip to the second hand. Again, screw down crown, 200 meters of water resistance. Genuinely, you can get this one wet. The loom on this watch isn't up to snuff really. I've yet to see a $100 watch with decent loom. Aluminium bezel insert, again, 120 click unidirectional rotating dive time. Pretty solid action here as well. Now, the resin strap that this one comes with is cheap and yes, let's be honest, it's cheap and nasty. It also flares out, meaning this watch looks a little bulkier than it actually is, but it's 22 mil lug width. Again, not gonna cost you a fortune to replace if you haven't already got a couple of 22 lug width straps lying around the house, just dying to go on your Juro. Bill Gates famously wears one of these and I reckon he can afford to wear pretty much anything he likes. So it's a thumbs up from Bill and a thumbs up from me. Next up, it's quirky, it's kitsch, it's $39.99, it's the Vostok Commandeerski Classic. So you are effectively buying a vintage watch. If you buy a Commandeerski Classic, I recommend Meronom.com. That is the factory shop in Chistopol in Mother Russia from where these come from. They've been making these Commandeerskis unchanged since the late 1950s. The design is 60 years old and it looks it and it feels it. There are dozens and dozens to choose from. There's some fairly straightforward field watch designs like this one, you know, 24 on the inner ring, 12 on the outer ring, black and silver, or there's some cray cray ones like this star-shaped gold one with a crown up there at half past one and a tank on the dial. There are so many you can pick and choose what you like. I chose this one, I chose black and gold with an eagle on the dial. Why not? Now you can mod these, they're very modifiable. You can tinker with the movements, you can adjust the timing yourself, you can change the hands, you could even change the dials. They are manual wind, these ones, so not auto. You're gonna to have to get used to winding a watch manually each day. And that is a coated brass, so they're not made of stainless steel. It's not a PVD coating here either. Screw on case back, only 30 meters of water resistance though. So if you wanna get creative, you can rub off that coating and rub it back down to the brass. You can then age it. There's a whole bunch of things you you can do to these common deer skis. They are interesting and quirky little watches if you like the look. Now, there is a special place in hell reserved for that stock standard leather strap. It is tougher than a babushka skin, but that's what NATO straps are for, right? 18 mil lug width, again, no problem swapping this one out. A lot of fun, these common deer skis, for not a lot of money. No list of budget watches on this channel would be complete without a couple of Pagani designs. And indeed, I've got two to show you, starting with this one. It's very much like a Seiko cocktail time, but for 10% of the price. If you're after some bling on a budget, may I direct you to the Pagani Design Official Store and to the PD1654 in particular. Four different colorways here. There's the plain Jane silver and black, which would probably be my choice. The black and gold, the gold and white, and the blue and white. Now, the real standout feature here is that Seiko VH65 movement. Now, I'm gonna show you the pictures of the two watches. What do you notice about the second hand? Well, they're ticking, aren't they? This is a quartz watch. It is a battery powered watch, but it's a mega quartz. That one ticks four times per second. So you get a lot of the look and the feel of a mechanical watch, but with the accuracy and the reliability that comes from a battery. I've no idea why more people aren't using these movements. They really offer the best of both worlds and they're certainly not expensive if Pagani can sell you the whole watch on a decent leather strap with some nice anti-reflective mineral glass on top and that lovely dial for less than $40. 100 meters of water resistance means there's an element of practicality here as well. Again, Dauphine hands, applied indexes and that dial genuinely looks great when you get it in some natural light. And that's a date complication at the three, so you get an added little bonus that way as well. And this style of budget quartz watch does tend to feel a little bit light and flimsy. There's not a lot of weight to these. They're somewhere in the 40 grams. So if you want a bit more meat, I've got a second Pagani later, but this would make a great Monday or Friday watch that you're not gonna have to set every time you put it on on a Monday morning because it's quartz. If I told you you could get a Swiss made watch with a full metal bracelet on your wrist for less than 60 bucks, you'd think I was lying, but I'm not. Told you, Wenger quartz stainless steel bracelet from an authorized dealer on eBay, 60 US dollars. They're a little more on Amazon. They're around 63, 64. I'll leave links for both anyway. Also look out for these Field Classics on a rubber strap, very, very comfortable. 
You can't really go wrong with a Swiss made field watch for $60, can you? I picked up one of these myself a couple of years ago. Don't expect luxury, you know, you're not getting a luxury watch for $60, but you are getting a Swiss watch. I'm guessing they're hollow end links and a press clasp there. I went for the one on the leather strap and I was mightily impressed with the package that I got overall for around 50 US dollars. Only a couple of necks with this one. It's quite long lug to lug. I've got a seven inch wrist as mentioned. If your wrist is much smaller than mine, I suggest you probably look elsewhere. If you're a big guy with a big wrist though, this is gonna suit you nicely. Also, the second hand didn't hit all of the indexes, which I know is a problem for some people. At this price, I simply don't care. The leather strap was actually very nice on the one I got, but I thought it looked great on a military style NATO. So you can buy Swiss at this price if you dig around, if you buy carefully, if you get on the Wenger bus. Chronograph number two, Pagani number two, and arguably the watch with the most interesting movement on today's list. It's a Seiko Mecha Quartz and it's less than $55. Again, it's the best of both worlds with this one, with the VK67 movement. You can pick this one up on a bracelet for $57. I'd probably be going for the leather strap variant for $5 or so less. I'll show you it on a couple of different strap options over the course of this very brief video. Now, this is one of the largest watches that I've got to show you today, about 43 millimeters in diameter with 22 mil lug width. So we've gone from kind of 40 to 43, even up to 44 for the Duro. That's only mineral crystal but it does have a mad pop of purple anti-reflective coating and it's a 12 hour chronograph. Push the top button, starts the chrono timer, and again, because it's that mecha quartz, it's a mechanical module on top of a quartz module, that chronograph's hand ticks five times per second, so it looks for all the world like you're wearing an automatic on your wrist. Only the small second indicator down at the six o'clock gives it away. This is the standard supply bracelet. It's all right. I'm not a massive fan of straight cut end links though, so I have swiftly swapped mine over onto a number of leather straps. Again, I love that kind of cross stitch vintage look especially playing with the color on the black dial this is the one that it's settled on permanently though a hair strap that probably costs more than the watch i've had mine for over a year i haven't had to adjust the time at all that's the beauty of these mega quartz modules and finally if you want a watch on your wrist for less than 60 dollars that's practical that's fun and that's fashionable you should have a look at swatch seriously you should do you know, I think Swatch gets ignored. It gets rather passed over by a lot of us watch guys on YouTube. Maybe it's because the watches themselves are a bit plasticky and a bit light and flimsy feeling. Maybe it's because they're viewed as a fashion brand because of all of the bright colors. But I think to overlook this style of watch at this price point is a mistake. This is a full size 41 millimeter man's watch with a day day complication in super clean, super legible black and white. They are now kind of bordering on to some slightly more unusual brown and purple colors, but still it's a full size man's watch with an acrylic crystal. And now we've gone a bit cray cray with some skeletonized ones. There are so many of these around though. You'll find one that suits your color tones. You'll find one that suits your preference. You'll find one that suits your personality. And don't forget if you buy a Swatch, you can take it back to one of their high street bricks and mortar stores and they'll replace the battery for you for life. No questions asked. I've also seen them poly watching those acrylic crystals back to a fair degree of clarity as well. You don't get that with any other watch on the list. So if you look like one of these people in the picture, this is the watch for you. So there you have it. I love making these lists. If nothing else, it reminds me just how many great watches there are out there for not an awful lot of money. What's your favorite? Personally, I cannot go beyond those classic square G-Shocks. Get one while you can because their prices are only heading northwards. Likewise, the Carison. I have got two in my collection and one on my wrist today. Sapphire, Seiko movement, classic proportions. You really can't go wrong for 55 bucks. Whichever you choose, remember. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.